Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. And uh, I hope you have had a good week. You're looking forward to school starting back up with whatever that looks like for you, whether you are uh, full online learning or whether you are going back to school. I pray that you are safe, you're well, and uh, we're looking forward to next Sunday being open in a small capacity for our adult services. We're still going to maintain online services for our children and youth. Uh, please be patient with us. We're, we're just wanting to make sure that we do this right, we do it safely, and while we are really, really excited to see all of you guys back uh, here at youth, uh, we we want to make sure we're doing it safely without endangering any of you. So please plan on joining us soon. Uh, in the meantime, you will be able to continue to join us here on YouTube in this way. Let's dive in. Do you remember when you were learning to read? I know that was a long time ago for most of you, but try and think back on those early days of elementary school with me for a second. When your teachers were helping you learn to read, they didn't just give you a 400 page book and say go for it. Of course not. That's because at the time you didn't have the skills you needed to be able to read. Reading was a big and new practice for you, right? It wasn't something you could just jump right into without any help or guidance. None of us could go from learning our ABCs to reading an entire book series without some help along the way. So as most of you know, I've got a three kids who are in this kind of learning to read stage. I've got one who is uh, learning his alphabet and trying to identify letters, and he's doing great at it. I've got uh, another one who is going into grade one this year, and he's trying to figure out how to put sounds together that to make words. But the English language, frankly, doesn't make any sense. When you read it, instead of it being the same letters making the same noises every time, sometimes a C makes a S sound, sometimes it makes a K sound. It doesn't make any sense. So trying to teach kids, you're not this age anymore, but trying to teach young kids how to read is a difficult thing to do. And so when we're trying to teach little people to read, we start at the basics. What does an A sound like? And does it always sound like that? Probably not. But in order to learn to read, you need someone to break it down for you. You need to learn what the alphabet sounds like. You need to uh, learn what all of the sounds each letter can make are. You need someone to break it down. You have to, someone, some, have, to have someone to show you, to teach you. And over time, reading becomes a lot more manageable for you. And while we're not talking today about the best way to learn to read, we have been spending time over the last few weeks talking about some of the things we can do to break down and to understand how to read another pretty big and important book in my life, and hopefully in yours as well. And that's the Bible. Maybe you've opened it a few times in your life, and because you've felt like you need something, or someone has told you that it's a, it has the potential to impact your life, life in a really big way. But then what happened? We probably got a little overwhelmed, and maybe we didn't feel like much changed in our life after we read it. I think we've all probably struggled with something like that before. We read the Bible, but afterwards we don't feel any different. Or our sadness, our anger, our frustration, our disappointment didn't go anywhere. Or we didn't see any change in what was happening around us. Our parents were still sick or fighting or getting a divorce. Or that girl or boy that you were really interested in uh, still doesn't want to talk to you. And these things just kind of add up. So many times we go to the Bible with the hope that we'll find something specific. We'll find inspiration to help us, motivation to live our life best, encouragement to keep going, information about something new. But when we read it, sometimes we don't feel like we get any of that. Then what do we do? For most of us, the answer is simple. We just don't read the Bible anymore. Maybe we don't understand what it's saying, or maybe we don't see any immediate changes. So we just decide not to give it a chance. We give up on it. 
because it just doesn't seem like the things we've heard, all of the great and life-changing stuff is actually true. Well, here's the good news. I think all those great things you've heard about the Bible actually are true. If I didn't, I wouldn't spend week after week talking to you about it. And I think that if we can just break it down a little, we find that the Bible actually can be really helpful in our lives. Today, we're going to take a look at a verse from a letter written by a guy named Paul. Thousands of years ago, Paul's life was changed because of Jesus. Paul was a guy who had once been completely against Jesus' followers and actually imprisoned a lot of them. But after an experience with Jesus himself, Paul became a believer. And from that point on, he was all in with his faith. As a result, Paul started sharing about what he'd experienced with others. He shared his faith. Why? Because God changed Paul's life. And he knew God could do the same for others. In this letter, Paul was writing to a guy named Timothy. Timothy was a young pastor who Paul supported and encouraged and mentored in his ministry. Remember, these were real guys who re lived real lives. They had real struggles and real questions. Even though we're not in the same situation that these two guys were in, I think what Paul told Timothy here can still encourage us as we try to figure out what the Bible can do for our faith. Let's take a look at 2 Timothy Chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is inspired by God and useful to teach us what is true. Okay, so even though this verse is short, it's super important to our faith. And I think the best way we can understand it and break it down is to look at three things. Who, what, and why. First, let's focus on who. Paul was writing to Timothy about Scripture. Of course, at the time, Paul didn't know that what he was writing would actually become part of the Bible. To him, it was a letter that God inspired him to write. Now, let's stop here for a second, because you might be thinking, wait, what? God inspired Paul to write this letter that would one day become part of the Bible. It's kind of a snake eating its own tail moment. But the short answer is yes. When Jesus left the earth, he left his believers with God's spirit to lead them, to go with them, to encourage them, and to inspire them. And so as Paul wrote this letter to Timothy, it was with God's spirit working in him, influencing him, and speaking through him. As Paul said from the start of this verse, that's what all scripture is, inspired by God. God is the who behind it. God's inspiration worked through the people who wrote scripture, and it's God's inspiration that works through us as we read it and apply it to our lives today. So who, so the who is God. God has inspired people to write down letters to each other to inspire us now who is god inspiring the writing of the words for the what question paul knew that god's spirit was in scripture and is in scripture and he knew that scripture would move in us instruct us inspire us and challenge us paul understood that in order for the message of christianity to keep going to last longer than he did he had to make sure People knew where to find God at work, in his work. Why? Well, let's look back at what Paul said. The Bible is useful to us because it teaches us what is true. It helps us to see the parts of our lives that aren't right or lining up with God. It's a way for us to know God better, to build a personal relationship with him, because his spirit is in the pages. That is the purpose of the Bible. What I want you to remember is this. We read the Bible because God is in it. When we read it, 
we better recognize his inspiration in the Bible, which helps us recognize God's inspiration in ourselves. It helps us to see his inspiration in the world and people around it. Now, that leads us to something really important. God has inspired everything. He did create the earth and everything in it, after all. We can find God in so many places, in a worship song, in nature, in a great conversation with a friend. You can find him all over the place. And while God isn't only found in the Bible, he is found uniquely in the Bible. Let me show you what I mean. Have you ever seen those coloring pages where you paint with water and it reveals the hidden image? It just shows all of these new colors. I know they're for little kids and my kids have a ton of them and have uh, destroyed them mostly, but I think they are really cool because at first they just look like plain coloring pages and maybe you can see a little outline and the, the background that they're in and you get a good idea of what's happening in the scene. But there's not a lot of life or color in these pages. But as soon as you put water on the page, all of these amazing details just appear. It's like that with the Bible. We can find God in so many places, but we get a really special view of who he is when we read the Bible. When we open his word, he comes to life in new and unexpected ways. We learn so much more about him. You see, we can learn things about God in Scripture that we wouldn't necessarily be able to learn anywhere else. Inside its pages, we read about people's experiences with God from thousands of years ago. We read about the questions they asked about life, about their struggles, their joys. And as we read the Bible, we'll find that we're part of a bigger story. We aren't alone in trying to figure out God. There have been a bunch of people asking the same questions and going through a lot of the same things we're going through now. And I think there's a lot we can learn about God through their stories and how God works through them. We read the Bible because God is in it. Simple as that. Now, you might be thinking that this sounds great and all, but how does it really apply to our lives now, to your life, to what you're going through right now? Think of it like this. If you have a best friend, you probably know a lot about them, right? All their secret, secrets, their habits, their favorite things. But you didn't know those things the moment you first met. Getting to know them and build the, building a relationship took time. You hung out together. You texted each other. You talked about your days. You shared experiences, and eventually all those moments added up to a really great friendship. The Bible can work in a similar, similar way in your life. We read the Bible because God is in it. We'll learn more about what is true about him and his purpose for our lives when we spend time reading the Bible. But like any relationship, we can't simply talk to him once and expect to know him right away. It's a process. God's Spirit can work in both the words on the page and in your heart to help you, to encourage you, and to teach you when you come to the Bible. And the more time you give to getting to know God and His plans for your life through the Bible, the better your relationship with Him will be. So this week, here's where I want you to start. First, put in the time. Commit to spending some time reading the Bible every day. Even if it's just five minutes, ten minutes, give it a try. If you were here during the first week of the series, you'll remember that we said the book of John is a great place to start. If you didn't catch that video, uh, go back a couple weeks and you will be able to find it. We have a youth playlist uh, on YouTube that you can click and it will go through all of our series. But uh, in this Break It Down series, uh, Break It Down Week 1, you will see that uh, John's a great place to start. It's all about the life and ministry of Jesus. And since Jesus is God, we get to know God by getting to know Jesus. So start there. Write down your thoughts or questions you have as you go. And if you need to, reach out to me. Reach out to someone you know who understands the Bible better than you do. And ask your questions. It is 
hugely important to ask someone who knows better because it will help you to understand to push through the things that don't make sense at first. Secondly, be consistent. Don't give up just because you don't feel close to God at first, just because you don't feel different right away or see any obvious change. Instead, keep going. Be consistent in your reading, even if it just is this week. Set an alarm to remind you. Keep your Bible by your bed or in a place where you'll see it every day. Or even ask a friend to check in on you and remind you to keep reading your Bible. Ask your parents. Talk to someone. Whatever works for you. Commit to being consistent and watch how God works this week. And one thing I want to add to that is I think it's important to read a paper Bible. So if you don't have a paper Bible, reach out to me. Uh, you can send an email. You can call the church. You can find me on Facebook or Instagram at Oak Ridge Student Ministries. Um, not because our phones are great and we always have them. But even now, as I open my phone, uh, there's two notifications. There's two text messages from, I don't know, I didn't look. But if you go to pick up your Bible first thing in the morning or last thing at night, and you have a text from a friend or you have a Snapchat from, from someone, you're going to check it and then you're going to get distracted. You're going to fall down the internet wormhole. The Bible, if you read it in paper form, doesn't have as many distractions. So if you need one of these, I've got a pile of them here in the youth room. I'm happy to deliver or get them to you. Just reach out and let me know. I think this is a hugely important resource to being consistent. There are way less distractions on paper than there are in your phone. As great as I think apps like YouVersion, um, the Bible app, all these things are. The last thing is ask God to teach you things. Before you open his word, remember that God's spirit is, is, is at work in you, in you. And because of that, you aren't alone. So ask him to help teach you as you read. Ask for his help to see the Bible's benefit at work in your life. So remember that we read the Bible because God is in it. I know the idea of God being in the Bible can be hard to wrap your mind around sometimes. And that's the reason we have these opportunities, we have these reminders, and we have the opportunity to talk about it. So please, 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 if you struggle with this, if you need a Bible, if you need someone to talk to, reach out to me, and we can connect this week about uh, how best to better understand what impact the Bible has in your life. And as we wrap up for today, I want you to think about this. What's one thing I want to know this week about God. Thanks, guys. Uh, have an awesome week. We're just going to wrap up in prayer, and uh, we will see you again next week. So, God, thank you for your word. Thank you for the opportunity we have to see you in it. I pray that you would reveal yourself to us this week as we seek to consistently find you. God, I pray if those who are watching today have questions or um, concerns or are struggling with reading, that they would reach out to someone who knows you to help them, to guide them to you. God, I pray that as we open your word, as we read the book of John, as we study the life of Jesus, that we would find you and your importance in our lives. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you again soon.